Greetings. <laughs> I've got a few matters to discuss. Locally sourced food. I don't want it. I'm not interested. I know here in Australia you have all the lovely, fresh, locally sourced food, but it's different for me. I'm British. I want the finest produce from delicious tropical waters, like you get. Swordfish, perhaps, or a luxurious turtle. <laughs> I don't want my food locally sourced. I live on the Piccadilly line. <laughs> I mean, the, the, la the language they use on menus is pre preposterous, isn't it? I mean, like, you know, on, on restaurant menus, we've all seen this. A crusty roll. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's the only type of roll there is. <laughs> All rolls have crusts. <laughs> that is the name for the roll's edge. <laughs> it is the term given to the outer limits of the roll where the roll meets the rest of the universe. <laughs> I think this would be an appropriate time to mention soft-shell crab. <laughs> Do you know, I used to be painfully naive about soft-shell crab. I didn't used to know anything about it, really. I, it sounds silly, but I used to think that a soft-shell crab is a special type of crab that has got a soft shell, but it isn't. I mean, to be fair, what would be the point of that? Worst crab ever. <laughs> Pathetic. Now, I, I only found out a little while ago what a soft-shell crab is, and I'll let you know, in case you don't know. Basically, soft-shell crab, all it is, is just a normal crab that it shed its shell because it wants to grow bigger, so it's got, like, a soft shell underneath, and then as the body expands, the shell will harden. So it's basically a vulnerable crab. You're eating a disabled crab. <laughs> a crab in search of a bigger body and a better life for him and his family, <laughs> who took a risk. <laughs> that didn't pay off. When you eat a soft-shell crab, you're eating a failed entrepreneur. <laughs> I've been thinking quite a lot recently about orgies. <laughs> Sorry to change the subject so abruptly there. <laughs> but there's no way I can get round it, because I'm now talking about something else. <laughs> so I can't avoid it. Now, I think it must be very tiring being at an orgy, mustn't it? Because, like, you know, it must be, you know, it must be an absolute nightmare on an administrative level. Because there's all various penises everywhere. There's penises all over the place. It's like spinning plates. Oh, uh, 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 got to get that one back up. <laughs> uh, this one's going down now. Forgot that one. <laughs> so I think it would be a lot more relaxing doing the lesbian sex. The only trouble is I don't really know anything about lesbian sex. I've got no experience of it. I mean, well, what is involved in the lesbian sex? Well, I suppose, uh, I suppose touch a boob. <laughs> That'd be an obvious one, wouldn't it? <laughs> and, well, ov obviously general writhing. And I suppose, if things go well, the possibility of forming an airlock. <laughs> I hope I've got that right. <laughs> I'd be the first to admit I'm not the greatest expert on the lesbian sex, 
but I'm pretty sure if you can form an airlock, you've got it made. You could, you could just sit back, relax, have a casserole, <laughs> and let the orgasm settle in. You don't have to do anything. The air pressure does all the work. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>